Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the bitch channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and to tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch stores on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Well, to begin with here, just a little bit of housekeeping. Firstly, my longtime viewers may know that for the last couple of weeks, I went totally outside of my usual pop brand of politics with a Star Trek live stream and then some clips of that as standalone videos. The number and timing of this was actually very accidental. Um, in all reality, I just kind of felt like taking a break. In as much as there wasn't really anything for me to add to all this stupid political theater of the last couple of weeks. I mean, it was political theater. What did you expect to happen? Exactly what happened? What do I have to say about something where I go, well, I know how it happened. Yeah, and it all went down just like I said. So with that in mind, the timing for kind of taking a break was kind of, you know, good. But if you're a subscriber who came to the live stream because, came to the channel rather, because of the live stream and or the clips, well, welcome to you here. I am going to step outside of my brand again on Sunday for a live stream review and commentary of Star Wars Rise of the Skywalker. Uh, it took less than an hour, by the way, after that thing's world premiere <laughs> for a bootleg copy, a very good one, to show up on various places online. But I will be doing that live stream to talk about Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker at September 22nd, 2019 at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Pacific. And if you want to watch it and get to it in advance, there is a link to it below. You can go there, click the reminder and get reminded 30 minutes and a half hour before the episode airs, before the stream starts. But be aware, those of you who happen to come for the Star Trek stuff for the last couple of weeks, be aware that my day-to-day -day commentary is usually political commentary. You may or may not agree with me, and if you don't, I would encourage you to watch anyway. Because as a libertarian with no skin in this game, I attempt to be the adult in the room. I will also bring a libertarian perspective to almost every issue, something that you will rarely see in other politics shows. I will not attempt to convert you. I'm just going to give you my perspective. Now, for my viewers who came to see my political commentary, hey, my apologies, but, but I've been a science fiction geek for my entire life. When something notable happens, I just can't stop talking about it. And for good or ill, The Rise of Skywalker is notable. But don't worry, I will find something to bitch about politically. The Democrats make that a near certainty at this point. And finally, the last bit of housekeeping. My original Twitter account was permanently suspended for unspecified reasons. If you'd been following my previous account, I'd ask that you follow my new one, which is at SYL Tales. Please do follow me there because lacking any real budget for marketing, social media is how I do my marketing. So follow at SYL Tales and share my videos on both Twitter and other social media. Social media is how I grow. Like, subscribe, and share, please. And that Twitter account again is at SYL Tales. Oh, Democrats, 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 you have brought this on yourself. You have ensured a Trump 2020 victory, your loss of the U.S. House of Representatives, and probably the loss of state and local seats due to blowback. You may have even secured yourselves a civil war. I certainly hope that history treats you with the contempt that you deserve. And you did it all to yourselves. You could have just left it alone. I mean, after all, you know what the real stakes are here. I admit, the real stakes are rather hard to track. So much so that I haven't never done an episode on it because I can't quite figure out how to explain it in a video that doesn't lose my audience after about 10 minutes. However, from what we know of 
public records and some investigations by a very brave couple of Ukrainian officials. They make videos every couple of weeks explaining what they're up to and what they've gotten to and the progress so far in their investigations. The most recent one is called International Corruption Facts, Oligarch Officials, Stolen Money, and U.S. Presidential Candidate. And I have a link to that video below. Please go watch it. Subscribe. There are great people to watch. And the press will never tell you what it is that those people are finding out, which is pretty horrifying. But the facts are quite clear. U.S. nationals, both in and out of government, conspired and colluded with Ukrainian nationals, both in and out of government, to influence the 2016 U.S. presidential election in the favor of Hillary Clinton. And that's only just the beginning. If you haven't seen it, Vice President Biden clearly engaged in an obvious quid pro quo by demanding that the Ukrainians fire a prosecutor or lose a financial aid that was already promised to them. Furthermore, Vice President Biden apparently had the full backing of President Obama inasmuch as Biden claimed this very thing to both the Ukrainians and to others. And that's still only the beginning. The Americans in and out of government that I mentioned were almost exclusively Democrats or were heavily associated with the Democratic Party. And somewhere in between all this corruption, billions of Ukrainian dollars were taken by U.S. nationals, both in and out of government. And this would include Vice President Biden's coke-addled son, Hunter. Hunter had been making as much as $83,000 per month for reasons. Should the real stakes come to light and be generally known, and in a fair Senate impeachment trial, it sure as hell ought to, the Democrats' party will suffer permanent catastrophic damage. After their stakes, after the real stakes come to light, an enormous number of their members will have no choice but to switch to the Republican Party or declare independence. The smart money, by the way, would be to become a Republican. The Democratic Party would become the party of death. That is, its own death. Moderate Democrats, not political pundits or anybody you see talking like myself, just off the street, moderate Democrats, will dump their party for the Republicans. Alternative, we could get lucky, and with only one perceived alternative, Americans might then look to third parties, and that would be the best thing that could happen. The U.S. needs as many parties with as many different ideas as possible. All we have now are two parties, varying only by degrees. Swing voters, of course, well, pff, the Democrats have just about lost them completely. By the end of this mess, they absolutely will, and they'll be voting Republican for the next two decades. And if those real stakes come out, as with Nixon, multiple generations of Americans will grow up thinking the Democratic Party is worse than Nixon. For generations, it will be easy for Republicans to smear Democrats as crooks, even if they don't deserve it. Just as Democrats do now with Republicans because of Nixon. Or, another possibility that I'm hoping for, the Democratic Party could in fact just die. And at this point, I'm totally okay with that. Particularly if it makes room for third parties. But them's the stakes, you Democratic nitwits. And you knew it going in. You have done this to yourself. After the Russian collusion narrative turned out to be the obvious hoax that it was, you should have just sat down and worked out a way to get someone elected in 2020 with more of a platform than Orange Man Bad and Free Stuff. But you didn't. You doubled down on the crazy, and now you sit here facing the potential death of your party. I mean, knowing the real stakes, I am amazed that the Democratic Party actually went forward with impeachment. It was a full-blown Kobayashi Maru no-win scenario. There was literally nothing for the Democrats to gain and everything to be lost. <sighs> what is going on in their brains? Now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi knows all this, too, and she's now um, not refusing to deliver the articles of impeachment to the Senate, supposedly waiting for assurances that the Senate will conduct a fair trial. 
Hey, Nancy, could you get any more transparent? That's not how this works. It's not how it's ever worked. And you claiming this is a transparent stalling tactic because you now know damned well that in a fair trial, the Senate could make public the real stakes and your goose would be well and truly cooked forever. Here's the way it works. The House holds the impeachment. The Senate holds a trial with the judge being the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. The Senate has absolutely nothing to say with how the House brings the articles of impeachment. Whatever it does internally, all of their problem, and then they bring those to the, to the Senate. The, the, uh, the, the, so the, the Senate has nothing to say about what the House does, and the House has nothing to say about how the Senate conducts its trial. The House concerns itself with impeachment, the Senate with trial, and they have no control over each other by design. That's how this works. This is the way it's always works. The reason the Speaker Pelosi is doing this is pretty simple. Number one, it delays a trial that could easily destroy the entire Democratic Party. The Senate could choose to actually hold a fair trial, and for the next year they could take testimony from witnesses and individuals who would prove the real stakes. The information is largely public. It's just hard to follow. In a fair trial, it would make everything monumentally public. Now, I don't expect the Senate to hold a fair trial. Trump will be acquitted. That's an obvious foregone conclusion. But what the Democrats have done is unlikely to have to... to what's going to happen is it's unlikely that any light will be shed on what the Democrats have done. Amazingly, the Republicans have a real knack for snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Number two, it delays um, the, uh, a matter that, as Trump's uh, letter to Pelosi makes clear, is an obvious political hit job on the part of the Democratic Party. It is so obvious that if they actually deliver the articles of impeachment to the Senate, the Democratic Party will lose the swing voters, as this is already happening, which is clear from the polling and the defection of three congresspersons from districts who voted for Trump. Number three, finally, in advance, holding this up attempts to hold the Senate liable if Trump's foregone conclusion acquittal doesn't go down with a guilty verdict the way the Democrats want. It lets the Democrats <clears throat> say in the 2020 election, uh, the Republicans didn't hold a fair trial. Trump would have been removed and found guilty if only they'd held a fair trial. And all the wailing and moaning in the world isn't going to help them. Trump's going to win. And they know it. And then there's a letter. Then with Speaker Pelosi, standing with her whole sword at her stomach, just ready to commit seppuku, that came Trump's letter. And with it, he won the election. Now, those of you who want to dismiss this letter as the ravings of a madman should check your privilege. That letter just won Trump the election. It now matters not one Quit what the Senate does. It doesn't even matter if the House never delivers the articles of impeachment or not. The letter cemented it. Whomever the Democrat Party presidential candidate turns out to be no longer matters in the slightest. Those of you who are attempting to dismiss this as the ravings of a madman are simply trapped inside your own ideological bubble. You have surround yourself with people who believe the exact same things that you do, and so you never ever hear anything other than those beliefs that you already hold. And this is one of the reasons, by the way, that it's nice to be a libertarian. There simply aren't enough of us to surround ourselves with like-minded individuals and insulate us from every other political opinion but our own. And I consequently therefore have friends on both the right and the left. I get to hear multiple points of view rather than buying into a single person's narrative that everybody else who doesn't think like me is evil. Those on the left have furthermore become enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought. And you have been this way, unfortunately, since the moment that Trump was elected. Trump isn't a madman. First off, he successfully changed the public narrative. The press is now smearing Trump as insane 
again. But whatever the conversation was, it is now about this letter and Trump's sanity. He changed it. He took away the narrative from the Democrats. They'd held it for several weeks, and he took it completely away with this letter. By the way, how many times have we seen this particular propaganda technique that the president is insane? At more than one point, it's been reported by sources close to the president that the cabinet was just on the edge of their seats, ready to rid the world of this obvious madman. Well, it never happened. It never will happen. Think what you like of Trump, but he's not a madman, which is something his letter to Pelosi makes absolutely clear. Trump has certainly made crystal clear what half of the country has already thought. Trump now has swing voters who, you know, starting to dislike this whole thing, as we can see from the polls. They're now starting to nod their head in agreement with his letter. Trump has moderate Democrats questioning their party or, in some cases, abandoning it completely. The Democratic Party is now the party of outright communism and the party of transparent corruption. The number of people who support communism and or who will support an obviously corrupt party is small indeed. The overwhelming majority of Democrats aren't communists, and the obvious corruptions make them feel soiled to be associated with the Democratic Party. With his letter to Nancy Pelosi, Trump has won the 2020 election. The only real question is, will leftists, already enraged beyond the capacity for rational thought, start a civil war when Trump wins. Now, I've discussed this in two of my videos. What will liberals do if Trump wins in 2020? And United States Civil War in 2020. And there are links to those videos in my description box. As you might imagine from the video titles, I ain't optimistic. But if you are forced, if you are forced to wage such a war, I would urge you to watch my video, Winning the Second American Revolution in a Week. And there's a link to that in my description box. Because in it, I discuss how a modern U.S. civil war could be won in only a week and with relatively little bloodshed. If you're going to fight that war, heed my suggestions. Don't fight it the traditional way that will involve blood in America's streets. Fight it in a way that it can be won in only a week with relatively little bloodshed. And to be honest, that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. And remember to watch my Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker live stream on Sunday, December 22nd, 2019 at 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Pacific. And if you want to go there and click at the... Uh, reminder button there is a link to that uh, live stream below so thanks for watching that's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed world-renowned tales from syl ranch the bitute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion and i'm bill stone ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing the control and manipulation of minds